All right, hello and welcome to the DevJobs Tech Talk about app clips in iOS. My name is Philipp Jahoda and I'm the CTO and founder at Ahoy Captain. We are a digital service provider and agency focusing on mobile development and web development mostly. Um, my background is actually also in mobile computing. I studied it at the FH Hagenberg, where I currently also am active as a part-time lecturer. In my day-to-day -day business, I'm mostly focusing on managing our dev team, as well as being involved in our mobile and back-end development. Occasionally, I also try to contribute to the open source community on GitHub, where I have various projects that I tend to from time to time. All right, let's go over the agenda of today real quick. Uh, first off, we will be focusing on actually getting to know what app clips are and what the main use cases of app clips in iOS are. Then we'll go over the most important features iOS SDK wise. So which kind of features in the iOS SDK are most uh, popular to use for iOS app clips. And then we'll go over to the actual implementation, where we'll have a step-by-step -step approach on implementing our first app clip. And then last but not least, I'll have a couple of closing words wrapping it all up, basically. All right, let's start off with what are app clips. And the easiest way to explain app clips is that they are a very lightweight version of your iOS app. And the main benefit is that you don't have to go through the traditional approach of going to the App Store, downloading an app and installing it in order to use its features. Uh, app Clips take away all that and basically allow users to scan what is called an App Clip code. You can see it here in uh, the picture down below. Uh, users scan that code and that invokes what is called a launch URL that then brings up your iOS app clip without users actually having to install it. And down here, we can also see a couple of uh, different demo app clips that I've used just for a showcase. And in our implementation, which we're going to after, we're going to actually build an app, app clip for a coffee shop, which will allow users to go to a coffee shop, scan the app clip code, pay for the coffee and then just take it away at the counter. All right, what are the most important features in terms of the iOS SDK that we can use in App Clips? First off, there is payments. So it's possible to accept payments via Apple Pay in App Clips. Additionally, there is the option to sign in with Apple when working with App Clips. So it's a convenient way of allowing users to create an account or register without them actually having to fill out forms. Then it's possible to send notifications to users, given that they have accepted or provided uh, permission to send them notifications. There's one minor restriction in App Clips. It's only possible to send notifications for eight hours after users have given permission in App Clips. And then last but not least, what we also like to use is location services. So it's possible to get access to the user's location in App Clips. And that's actually a very neat feature because it allows you to provide geofencing, which means that let's go back to the example of the coffee shop. You can actually restrict an App Clip only to show up if a user is in a particular location, for example, your coffee shop which means that if he were to scan an invocation URL somewhere else that is not in close proximity to your shop, then actually the app clip won't open. And that's basically just an additional security feature for preventing malicious use. Now to the implementation. So as mentioned, we are going to build a coffee pass or coffee shop app clip. And first off, we're going to start off by creating an Xcode app project in case we don't have one yet. And then as a first step, we'll add a new target to that Xcode project using the app clips template. And what then happens in the background is Xcode will actually automatically generate all the required files. And then we end up with what we can see here in the screenshot, a new target for app clips, which also allows you to choose then a display name for your app clip and you can also choose a bundle identifier. Next up, 
we have to set up an associated domain for, your, for our app clip. And that associated domain is going to be in the invocation URL, which means that whenever an app clip code is scanned with, for example, the camera of your iPhone, then that invocation URL is going to be launched. It contains your associated domain, and that will then lead to the launch of your app clip. And in order to actually make that all possible, we'll need an entitlements file in our Xcode project. And that entitlements file then needs an additional item, which is called the associated domain. And in our use case, I've basically used our domain, ahoycaptain.com, and then I've just added a subdomain for the app clip. And now we are basically ready to launch, launch our app clip. But first off, before we actually can launch it, we'll also have to set up a UI for our app clip. And that is usually done using the traditional way, using storyboards. And what we can see here in the screenshots is on the left-hand side, we have what is called the app clip card. That is something that can only be modified in certain ways and will show up whenever we scan an app clip code or NFC tag or QR code containing our invocation URL. And on the right hand side, we have what is called a local experience. And that can be used in order to configure app clips for local testing. So it says here, as it says here on the slides, for production use, we'll have to go to App Store Connect to actually set up our app clips. But if we want to actually define and test our app clips locally, we can do so by going to the developer settings and creating a new local experience. And this is pretty much what is shown in the screenshot here on the right hand side. We define a URL prefix, a bundle identifier, and then some additional parameters. And that is what is going to be launched when an app clip code is scanned. Next up, and this is now the traditional UI we also define in the storyboard. Here, uh, I've just created a simple screen where the user has the choice between two options. One, he signs in with Apple to get a free coffee or he uses Apple Pay to actually pay for the coffee. And this is the UI that will show up once an app clip invocation URL is scanned and then the user clicks on the open button and then your actual app clip UI is going to show up. And basically you can do almost anything with some restrictions that you would be able to do in a normal iOS app. You can also have multiple screens, have navigation and stuff like that. In our case, we kept it very simple for the showcase. Just sign in with Apple or payment and then you'll get your imaginary coffee. And last but not least, uh, probably you also want to launch your app clip project directly from Xcode even with certain parameters and you can do so by modifying your schemas in Xcode and add an additional environment variable. And in our example case, I've added the invocation URL as an environment variable and I've also provided an additional location parameter. In our case, Ahoy Captain, so that's just the name of our office. And what we can then do inside the app clip is map that uh, location name to an actual geolocation and then apply the geofencing in order to have some kind of security gateway to not allow users to launch the app clip if not actually in close proximity to whatever location it is here. And this just showcase, showcases how we can test that directly from Xcode. All right. Well, this was it concerning app clips. Just a couple of closing words from my end. I think app clips in iOS is a rather new approach that is pretty much uh, still advancing in certain ways. However, if used correctly and if used for the right use cases, I truly believe that it can drastically improve user experience and also convince users of downloading your actual app the traditional way, like you do it normally from the store without actually having to do so in the first place, just to, for example, use a minimum set of features that they currently need. All right, that's it from my end. If you'd like to contact me, please do so using the provided email or visiting our website. Also, it's not on the slide, but if you're interested, check out my GitHub page. My username is PhilJ. There you can see all the open source projects that I'm currently working on. Thank you.